Hello everyone and welcome back to the Key Productive YouTube channel. We're diving into Almanac today, which is a collaborative document editor that is being described as a great way for teams that are asynchronous to collaborate on documents. It reminds me very much if Notion and Process Street had a baby. I'll explain everything you need to know about Almanac in today's video, including everything like the pricing, early access, and how it can be helpful for you and your team. So, as you can see, I'm here inside of Almanac, and it is a very clean, well-designed experience from the get-go, in my opinion. And as you can see here, it looks very much like much of the other document creators, even the likes of Dropbox Paper, the likes of Notion, the likes of Coda to some extent. Now, as you can imagine, creating a new document is a great starting point, and this is really designed for you and your team and has a few features blended in between that are aiming to be a little bit different to how document applications are doing right now. So as you can see here, this is what it looks like inside of a document, and it very much looks like a combination of Coda and Google Docs. And it does have, I would say straight away, a little bit of a confusing interface because there's quite a lot to look at straight away, but it's actually a lot more simple than you think. Now, as you can see here, the editor right in front of you is much like any other. For example, I can start typing away and be able to add all that I need to. I can use the text formatting up here which is the majority of what might confuse you. But for example, you would see in a traditional Google or Microsoft Word document. Now inside of Almanac, much like in Notion and Coda, you can use the slash command, which is becoming much more of a common way to create different elements or blocks inside of your account. Now you can add media and embeds from other applications like Airtable, Figma, GitHub, Loom, Mirror, Miro, and so much more. And you can also change the color of the text. But you can also add internal media, like images, files, and linking to another document. Now I'm gonna skip past, I guess, a lot of the things you'd expect, just because I wanna show you something that does it slightly different to things like Notion. Now inside of Notion, they do have something called linked blocks. Well, they have a feature called snippets. And snippets is a handy way to be able to add a template of text that you've created from earlier. Now I haven't actually created some snippets, but we will do later and we can search them in here and find a snippet to add inside of a document with quite a bit of ease in, ter in terms of helping you to reduce unnecessary time creating too many elements that can be templatized for later for you and your team. Now on this right hand panel, you'll notice that there's an activity thread and you're probably wondering, okay, most applications have that, but why is that different? Well, inside of Almanac, they pride themselves on something called branch. Now branch is basically a way for you to create multiple versions of a document that for example, in progress that you can merge later on into a document that is comprehensible. And this is perfect for when other team members are collaborating and bringing stuff together, and you want to bring the final pieces of the puzzle together at the end. Now, so activity becomes really important in that process. And the one way that you can get a branch created is by going up here in the top left hand corner. Now, as you can see, you can edit the private version linked to the main document. As it suggests, this is great for revisions. And you can see that changes on your current version don't affect the main document. You can merge your changes back into the main document later. Now, it's sort of like a little sort of like a low-key experience. If you've not watched the Marvel uh, series, a little bit like that, you're creating a new branch of the same thing with modifications. And as you can see, a new version will be created. So let's go ahead and create a new version. And as you can see, this can get modified with as much detail as possible. Now, let's add something as a demonstration, just as a, just a basic, so company overview, keep productive, helps people find apps. 
And let's go over to merge, which merges it with the main document. Now, as you can see, it's highlighted the first change that is going to be merged and you can actually see what is being currently replaced. Now, obviously, this is going to be so much bigger if you and your team are being able to do a larger modification to it. But I'm going to go and merge that one change, which means it actually creates it back into the main document. So as you can see here, you can leave some notes for that person and merge it back in with that document. And as you can see, it's celebrated because we're back to the version that we were before. But you can actually go back and see certain versions that were created by people. And that's apparently quite helpful for teams that are collaborating, but they don't necessarily want to do that in real time and be able to merge final amendments that are best suited for the team. Now, at any given time, you can show all the versions that are active. Of course, I just merged back that branch, but you can see here that that was merged on this date and you can also view it, make a copy, and you can see any of the copied ones in which I haven't done yet. So very much like Loki, that's the best way to describe it and hopefully it helped you to understand it. So that's a little bit of the difference around the sort of merging side. I want to touch on the reviewing side because one of the important parts of the process when you're creating documents, especially internal documents that might be static or might be used with new employees or around uh, siloed information is actually reviewing it and getting approval. So one thing you can do is actually request a review of it and send it to a specific per person in your team. So you can see that it's basically sending an email to them and you expect them to get it at a due date. And you can also create a branch to this review, which means that they can make some comments and uh, really give you a modified version of it, ready to bring back and merge into the main document if you and the team are happy. So I can send that request off and uh, well, if I had someone else on my team, I could send the request off, but that request would be sent over to that person and they'll be able to get that in their inbox. The inbox is all the way out here. So you could see any of the documents that you need modifications on or things that are in lieu that you need to be able to find and um, make changes on. So just a few of the other things that are different inside of Almanac. You've got a table of contents. You get that inside of the likes of Coda. Comments, you get that inside of both Coda and Notion. But there is something a little bit different here called Tasks which is actually available through Dropbox Paper. They've sort of taken the, the same experience, it, it being on this right-hand panel, but you can create new documents that are correlated to the task, allowing you to add a description, assign it to a person and give it a due date. So over here, you can also create references. References are quite helpful when, for example, you're allocating stuff to people or maybe even just adding some context to the document. For example, one of the great ways that you could add, you know, build a, a bit of a stronger relationship with them is, is by linking documents that are connected or even people that are most associated to this, which is perfect for building properties, much like you would inside of a database in Notion. But down here, you can see references when it's referenced in, which is perfect when you're connecting up your documents inside of Almanac. And you can even see the people that are mentioned using the at mention. So that's a right hand menu bar, and it's quite helpful for being able to add a, a bit more detail into your Almanac document. You can also use insert up here, which gives you a bit of insight into, for example, the, the details of the media side of it. Okay, so a few other items on this. For example, when you're selecting something, you can actually turn it into a task or even turn it into a snippet for later. I mentioned that I'd show you snippets. It's much like what how superhuman snippets work. If you don't know how they work, I'm just going to demonstrate. So for example, I could say this snippet is our company mission. If I create this snippet, anytime I'm in a new document, for example, down here, I press slash command and snippet. If I can find it. Oh, it's because I've got the snippet area open. <laughs> say I want to be able to add a snippet in this case, the mission, then I can just paste it. It's very much like in document templates that are available inside of things like Coda. So the sharing abilities are quite easy. You can share it inside of your team. You can also put read receipts on it and give them access to certain people. For example, commenting read only and even give request access up here as well. 
Now in the file area, you can get a bit more detail into the insights of your document. For example, how many times it's been read, how many times it's been edited and the tasks associated to it, which is helpful from a global perspective. You can also see a history and you can compare it to, for example, another branch that has been created. So this is perfect for, for example, comparing the merge branches that you've created earlier in the document. So one thing you can do in Almanac is actually publish this, and this actually allows you to publish it to the Almanac community. So for example, you can share this as a useful template, and we'll come to that nearer the end. Now on the template side of stuff, you can see here, this is a good example of a template project plan that I created earlier. And what you can actually do is start using this to edit this in much more detail, but you can actually naturally use the workflow side of stuff. And I mentioned an app called Process Street, and it's fairly similar to some extent, although it doesn't give you the full functionality of Process Street. You can go up here and press new workflow. Now you can create a branch of this document that can be merged into the main document later on. You can request approval, which is perfect for formally approving the document and ask for feedback and share read receipts. So you can actually go ahead and build the document out and be able to get the relevant feedback on it and go through almost a workflow orientated side of things as well. Now in this view, you can actually see the tasks, um, which are pretty helpful. But the one thing that you'll be able to do is to create it into an actual document. You'll need to create a branch version of it. You can see comments and references over here too, which are different inside of every document. Now, as you can see on this left hand side, you can see all of the files that are connected in your account. You can also see anything that's in review and any groups that you've created as a team and any directory information where you can create new groups. Now over here, there is ability to create handbooks. Handbooks are a little bit different because they're great for more static experiences. So as you can see, this is the handbook function, which is apparently a great way to create important documents into one area. And this is probably a bit more suitable for formalized information. So for example, if you and your team have created a bunch of documents and you want to be able to make a more of a public facing or community facing experience, then this is probably best for that and takes a bit of time to set up, but they've done one that I'll demonstrate in this video over the top that can be quite helpful. Now, as you can see here, there's also an ability to import. You can import from applications like Confluence, Dropbox, Google Docs, Notion and Word, but you can also do it from HTML markdown and zip files if you want to as well. Now, one of the things that I'm missing here is that they've got a command bar. And from here, you can actually go ahead and search stuff, create groups, etc. But you can also create documents from templates and templates are a great way to save yourself some time and use a bit of a simplistic process to be able to go through and you can go ahead and use the templates below. Now they do have some great templates that are really derived from the community side of stuff. And you can see these are the top contributors to the templates area, but you can go ahead and make a copy of, for example, some teams that have made, for example, cold emails using dynamic and conditional variables. You can make a copy of that and bring that in. But for example, if I wanted to maybe look for career ones, you can find career based templates inside of their templates area. So for example, 25 interviews for finding the right fit. This was done by Marty Fisher and I can create it. And as you can see, it's an open sourced document to 25 interview questions for finding the right fit. And they're quite helpful for teams to be able to copy that into their own documents. But if you want, you can actually create your own profile and publish your own thoughts as well, becoming almost a thought leader in that space too. So one of the great things about Almanac, I'd have to say, is the branching ability. It does take some time to get used to, but I know many teams that struggle with documents that are created that, for example, they might um, want to be able to make modifications to, but they don't want to do it in real time. So that might be a great way for you to create multiple versions of it and bring it back to the original elements of the document. But if you're a team that probably doesn't use that function, then this application is, uh, whilst it's good in its design, it has a little less features than what you'd expect to see in apps like Coda and apps like Notion. 
in terms of the database functionality, but it does really do well at the document side of stuff and creating a really document focused experience, which to be honest, if you're looking to remove those elements inside of the other apps, this might be a good fit for you. So there are a few options when it comes to pricing, and this has actually changed since last time I did a review. In their early access, I believe they were charging $99, which I thought was a little bit high per month. But as you can see here, they have a free plan, which is $0 per user and comes with 25 free documents, as well as unlimited guest access. So they do now have a free plan. They also have a pro plan with unlimited guests and documents, as well as share handbooks to the web and customize handbook and workspace design. Priced at about $15 per month, which isn't a bad overall pricing, but it is a little bit more expensive than what you'd expect to see in Notion, but probably I would say on par with the likes of Coda. And they do have an enterprise plan, which comes with some more secure SSO and SCIM, as well as focused onboarding and priority support. So you can see a bit of a breakdown of what features you have available for those new uh, accounts. So for example, if you're free pro or enterprise and what you get in sp each specific plan. So as I said, this application is probably best suited for teams that create multiple documents and collaborate quite aggressively on different versions. It's also got some nice workflows to help you ease into feedback and also review requests. And it has some nice abilities to save you time like snippets and templates that really take you a little bit further. But if you compare it to the likes of Notion, I think you'll be getting a different experience. Notion is probably much more suited for less document focused teams, mainly because Notion provides the depth of the databases, which gives you much more insight and the abilities to create more advanced tables, etc., than you would inside of this application. I feel this is a very document um, process centric uh, application that is probably better suited for teams that use those side of things. It is definitely well designed. You can tell that from the, the outset. They've really put some time and attention into the feedback and collaborative elements of this application. So guys, you can check out it in the link in the description and find out a bit more over at Almanac. I'll put a link in the description Hopefully you found this video helpful. Let me know if you have any feedback and feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you're interested. Thank you very much, folks. Bye.